Hello. I'm George Warty, the new president of American Airlines. Mr. Warty was elected to this office just a few weeks ago. And like many of American's top management people, he came up through the ranks. He started out in this business as an apprentice mechanic over 30 years ago. Now, he directs the operation of an airline with annual revenues well over $1 billion. Here he is, Mr. George Warty, the sixth president of American. I thought I'd like to take a few moments of your time today to talk to you a little bit about some concerns that I have and also tell you some of the strengths that I feel as though we have in American Airlines. One of the major strengths of American Airlines is its people. We have, in my opinion, the finest people, most qualified people of any airline in the world. And it seems to me, in my experience with American Airlines, that once we define the problem for our people, they seem to have the ability to do the impossible when the chips are down, they're able to produce a product superior to any other carrier in the business. And therefore, I thought today a good it would be a good opportunity for me, if I could, to define the problem. Going back through the years, one of the things that's changed in American Airlines is the fact that we have grown from a small company over the last 35 years to one exceeding 35,000 people. Our ability to communicate with each other has obviously become more difficult. But we've tried to use this medium of communication today as the basis for some future programs that we intend to conduct with you, of communicating with you, hopefully, as close to eyeball to eyeball as possible. Because it's obvious to me that communications is one of the most important elements of our business. I'd like to start by reviewing with you the organization change that has just taken place and outline the definition and differences of responsibilities between Mr. Spader, who is now the chairman and the chief executive officer of the corporation, and my position as president. Mr. Spader has reporting to him our flagship hotels, which is under our Sky Chefs organization. He has our corporate planning, as well as our public affairs. My job primarily is operating the airline, and as president and chief operating officer, I have all the departments reporting to me that we feel as though are necessary in order to turn out the type of product that we must have in order to be competitive. We have in passenger marketing, Walter Rauscher. Executive Vice President of Operations is Don Lloyd-Jones. Our Senior Vice President of Administration is Gene Overbeck. Our Senior Vice President of Finance is Dick Bressler. And our Senior Vice President of Freight Marketing is Otto Becker. I think it's a top-notch team. Each of them are professionals and experienced in their various responsibilities. I'd like to give you a little review of what's happened to American Airlines in comparison to its competitors for the first six months of 1972. As you can see here, American Airlines has improved their position by about $16 million, showing a much less loss in 72 than we did in 71. United Airlines, they have shown pretty close to a $22 million improvement in their loss position. However, the one that has shown the best performance at, in, of all is TWA showing almost a $30 million improvement. Eastern Airlines has shown about a $20 million improvement. In revenues, we have improved our revenues in 1972 over 1971 by about 13.1%. I think it's a very credible job. However, our expenses, 1972 expenses increased over 1971 about 9.1%. I'm sure all of you at this particular point in time feel as though we may be able to be relaxed about this thing rather than uptight. Revenues are on the increase. Everybody is selling hard. However, the key point here is cost control. We find 
that one of the keys in our expense increase has been in total wages and benefits. You can see here our total wages and benefits in 1972 over 1971 is up about 11.8% or $26 million. This means that the marketing department has got to sell $26 million worth of tickets more than it did in 71 just to stay even. In addition to that, and all of you are well aware of this particular problem because your household, I'm sure, is suffering the same as our airline with the price of food increasing at the rate it has. Our meal costs and what have you are up approximately 19, almost 20%. Four and a half million dollars in that area. Commissions to agents by virtue of the fact that we're a more uh, oriented toward personal and pleasure traffic is up about 41% or $4.4 million. And our ground equipment maintenance because of the influx of the wide-bodied aircraft, the more sophisticated loading equipment that we're dealing with is increased by 18%. All of these elements are necessary in our business. The fact that you people are paid more is obvious because you are better people. But the only way we can continue to do something like that and to stay in business is to take into consideration this message in our July 24th issue of the flagship news. What I mentioned in that particular article is the fact that we've got to learn how to work smarter and not necessarily harder. So therefore, if we're going to continue to be leaders in this particular field of ours, we've got to market our product at a price that's going to sell. And the only way we can do that is to increase the ability of our airline to handle this increase of volume at the lowest possible cost. Speaking in terms of what you need to do in order to market your product and be successful, I'd like to talk for a few moments about performance. American Airlines has had a reputation through the years of being one of the most reliable carriers in the business. I would like for us to retain that particular position and I would like to do it at a price that we can afford. As you can see here from this particular chart, our standard is a maximum of 15% of our trips delayed over five minutes for all causes. You can see here in the month of January, we certainly were almost more than double what that standard is, and predominantly the problem was in the weather area. And it had to do with the influx of wide-bodied airplanes, our personal pleasure markets. However, in June, we had bad weather with the floods and what have you, which in turn had an impact on marketing, and our operation was not as good as it should be. So I urge all of you that participate in this part of our business that on-time performance is a very necessary part of it. Well, I think we've done quite a bit here in trying to define what our problems have been and what we think our opportunities are. And I'd like, if I could, for a moment, to go back to how we opened up this conversation today, and that was on communications. Because I'm sure if each of us were able to sit down and discuss our views with each other mutually, there would be no misunderstandings and we could overcome any problems we might have. You know, sometimes if you sit down with your supervisor, you find out that he's a pretty good guy and he probably will understand a little more than you give him credit for. And I feel that possibly he might understand a little bit more about you as an individual and what some of your hang-ups and problems are. But really what happens is you start to home in on what you can do as a team towards solving some of Americans' problems. And I feel we ought to stop worrying about things we can't do anything about and concentrate on those things that we can do something about. And believe me, in my opinion, there isn't anything in any way, shape, or form in American Airlines today that we're experiencing or going to experience that the people that we have in American can't do something about. Thanks an awful lot for listening to me today.